the nationwide football league on Sky Sports, sponsored by Duckham's, giving a voice to football fans. Us to go up, and quite honestly, the Premier League needs us there. We have our critics, we have our doubters. I'm well aware that we're being tipped for the playoffs. Well, we'll see. Everything to play for. But the pressure's mounting on Manchester City, leaders for three months, but now without a win in five. Today they face a Charlton team that appears to be on course for Premiership football again and has scored more goals on their travels than any other side in the country. Two of the best, head to head. Here's Fisher. Oh, great goal! Robinson! Oh, that's an outstanding goal! Well, the winning streak may have come to a surprise halt at home to Swindon last week, but that defeat won't have worried Alan Kerbishley and co. too much. It was one of those freak results that crop up every now and then. Now with Ipswich and Manchester City also losing last week, it made no difference to the top of the table. But Charlton can only afford to drop four more points if they want to beat the all-time record for the highest number of points. Sunderland currently hold that with 105. Well, the main road pitch may not be premiership quality, but everything else about this famous venue is City's average attendance this season is almost 32,000 and the ground will be full to the rafters again for the club's biggest game of the season so far. Live on Sky Sports 3 this afternoon with interactive coverage for Sky Digital viewers on Sky Sports Extra. It really is developing into a thrilling promotion race. Charlton may have the luxury of a 12-point cushion, but Alan Kerbishley isn't taking anything for granted, while Joe Royal believes that despite their recent wobble, City will still manage a top-two finish. Ray and Nigel are pumped up for this one. Now, Ray, some people are writing off City at the moment, but Joe obviously won't stand for any of that talk. I don't think he can afford to either. They're, they're well up there, Marcus. They've got every chance. But it's interesting that they have lost four games at home and drawn one. Um, then those four games at home could, could cost them, could cost them dearly. Um, they've got to start winning again, they haven't won in five, so he must be having a little bit of a panic up, but he's got to stay strong for the lads and uh, I'm sure that they'll start producing very shortly. That pitch doesn't help, does it? Well, it's nice and big. That's the one thing, the one benefit about the main road pitch, although it, it is a bit bobbly, but uh, there's a bit more time and space out there, so that will compensate for the bobbles, I would have thought. Nigel, what about Charlton? Presumably that defeat last week was merely a blip. Well, there's been a lot of blips, not just for Charlton, but for all those at the top. Um, Charlton had a fantastic season. As you said, they could equal or beat Sunderland's record, and they're in a better position than Sunderland were this time last season. They romped away with it. But I think it is just a blip at home against Swindon, who, all credit to them, are fighting for their lives down there. Um, but I feel today's going to be a big game. It's a big game for City, because if City can win today, it's really got a game in hand, and that puts pressure back onto Ipswich, who obviously play Norwich today as well. So it's a big, big day. Well, here is uh, the top of the table. Charlton 77 points from 35. 
and then Ray, those five sides grouped together so closely, and of course Ipswich play today against their local rivals Norwich. Yeah, they do. They're at, they're at home as well, Marcus, and I think Ipswich have got to start putting a few results together as well, but they're still in there, having had their little bad spell, and Manchester City are well in there as well, having had their uh, little blip, as we call it. And of course, we'll keep you right up to date with uh, Ipswich's progress against uh, Norwich, but time now to look back, no, so far this season. One o'clock kickoff. City looking to end a run of five games without a win. But it's the rest of yesterday's first division goals when we come back. More Super League coming up for you tonight, one of the biggest clashes of the season so far. The two favourites for Super League 2000, Wigan and Leeds, head-to-head -head from the JJB Stadium. Live action starts tonight from 6.30, only on Sky Sports 1. Right now we're building up to Manchester City against Charlton in the first division. And there goes the City squad, off to warm up at their Platt Lane training headquarters. They don't warm up on the pitch, they pop down the road in a minivan to get prepared. And they look pretty relaxed ahead of their biggest game of the season so far. So does that Stewart? Honours even between the two over the years. But of course City are looking to do the double this season after their win at the Valley back in November. Charlton have managed only one win in their last five trips to Main Road. That was in February 1990 in an old Division One fixture when Andy Jones and Paul Mortimer were on target in a 2-1 win. David White scored for City then. Let us get all the team news now from Main Road with Alan Bentley. Thank you, Marcus. One man who didn't get on the minivan, as you described it, was Lee Mills. He's on loan from Bradford City. He's got a rib injury. He had an injection yesterday, but he's not fit enough to play. So Robert Taylor starts for Manchester City. Let's have a look at the sides in detail for you, starting with the home side. And Nicky Weaver in goal. He'll be looking for a to add to his 14 clean sheets so far this season. Mind you, it has to be said, he's not kept one in the last eight. 19, Danny Tiato, he switches to left back with 36, Danny Granville dropping to the bench. 18, Jeff Whitley, news on him. He made his 100th career appearance at Barnsley last week. And Whitley's in a midfield, which Joe Royal has tinkered around with in recent weeks. And today, he brings back eight in Bishop, who played in an old Division One fixture between the two over 10 years ago. And up front, well, it's top scorer, Sean Goto at 10. He's shaken off a knee injury. And with Lee Mills out, 37, Robert Taylor comes back in. Now, he's been at Lillishaw this week for treatment to a nerve problem in his calf. He has returned better than expected, just as well with Mills out and Lee Peacock and Danny Allsop injured. As for Charlton Athletic, here we go. Well, Richard Rufus is suspended, so six Carl Tyler comes in for a first start of the season. Otherwise, really very much as expected. Alongside Tyler is 12 Steve Brown, the club's longest serving player. Seven Sean Newton scored here almost four years ago. He's another with a long service medal, eight years for him. Four Graham Stewart had three seasons under Joe Royal in his days at Everton. He picked up an FA Cup winner's medal, of course. And goals really throughout the side. Stewart himself has six, eight Mark Kinsella has five, 11 John Robinson has eight, while up front nine Andy Hunt has weighed in with 21, 16 of which have come away from the Valley, but 33, Matt Svensson is still looking for his first goal in Charlton Colours. Will he get it today, I wonder, but bad news about Lee Mills, Marcus. Alan, thank you very much indeed. Yes, disappointing news as far as City are concerned regarding Lee Mills. Uh, let's continue our look back at yesterday's First Division goals. Uh, next up, Queen's Park Rangers in a rich vein. It's difficult. It's home. Our uh, Sheffield United who are a crew are now 13 points short of safety. Port Vale, nine points adrift, albeit with a couple of games in hand. Warsaw's defeat means they're now in serious trouble. Four points behind West Brom and Portsmouth. Crew, Nottingham Forest and Crystal Palace can't relax yet either. Sheffield United are into the top half, level on points with Blackburn. QPR and Bolton are only six points short of the playoff zone. Fulham and Wolves still very much involved as well. We've already seen the top six. We know just how competitive it is. Now you can see the goals from all three nationwide divisions in our Football League review tomorrow at four o'clock on Sky Sports 1 and it's repeated at 11 o'clock on Sky Sports 2. Well, kickoff is fast approaching at Main Road. Fourth v first at the top of the first. Charlton had the best away record in the country, so those city supporters 
may feel just a little perturbed. Charlton have won their last six on the road. They've lost only three all season. Well, John Robinson's form has been a major factor behind the Addict's success this season. He was February's Nationwide Player of the Month, and we'll hear from him next. Now, more European football for you next Thursday. The quarter-final second leg in the UEFA Cup, Werder Bremen and Arsenal. Arsenal two up from the first leg, of course. And there will also be highlights of the Stadia Prague Leeds quarter-final second leg. It's all on Sky Sports News from 7 o'clock next Thursday. Right now, it's all about Manchester City and Charlton Athletic at Main Road. Interestingly, the bookies are going with Charlton, 5-4 favourites, City 7-4 and a draw 11-5. Well, no question, February was a fantastic month for Charlton, who won all four of their league games. John Robinson was their principal inspiration. He popped up with the winner against Fulham. And was on target again at home to Sheffield United a few days later. His performances earned him the Nationwide Player of the Month award, something that took him rather by surprise. First off, didn't even know about it, but obviously very pleased now. Um, I mean, the team, at the end of the day, it's, it's a team game. Um, my form wasn't that great at the beginning of the season, um, and I just hopefully, personally, I just wanted to pick it up a little bit, and I felt it's done that. Um, late probably beginning of December onwards so and it does help when you've got a squad of players like this and you're on a fantastic run as what we were doing confidence is high and yeah obviously very pleased and very proud to have been named it there's nothing that really went wrong I mean people may think we must have gone wrong because we lost one nil but nothing I mean we played well to be honest uh, Swindon defended very very well and even they, I mean, they scored very early on and we thought well at least we've got 85 minutes, something like that, to get the goal back. But, I mean, they put bodies in front of things, the keeper made some great saves, um, and it just wasn't our day. It, that's all that we boiled down to, it just wasn't our day. And if it, if it came to an end, it, had to, it would have probably ended up coming to an end at some point. So, the, if it did come to an end, at least the others didn't gain any ground on us, which was the main thing. We thought we were good enough to stay up the year we went down, to be perfectly honest. People may not think that, because it doesn't positions don't lie third from bottom kind of thing second from bottom whatever but it went into the last game of the season and we hadn't got one point in eight games so we were thinking all oh, what ifs in that but we've bounced back and that's the hardest thing about it is you go down disappointed like that if you knew you th were good enough to stay in the division um, and the following year could be a hiccup but it hasn't been we've progressed and I think it's the squad of players we've got now and the, the experience we had from being in the premiership will be a lot better for us if, if we go up, and that's a big if. So people may not think that because there's a 12 point gap and thinking, oh, you're already up. But as I say, it's, as quick as we grew up there, we know as it can be changed around just as quick. So as I say, with a nice result on Sunday, we'll go towards getting us up. Well, there he is, 28 years of age. He's now Charlton's most capped player, 19 caps for Wales, full of <laughs> smiles. And, and, and he was outstanding in that live game against Warsaw the other day, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He played very well. But he's got two good feet as well. He can get wide and get crosses in on his left-hand side. He can go over to the right, put crosses in from the right-hand side. But he can also join in and score his fair share of goals, as we've seen against Fulham and against Sheffield United. You know, one with his head. So uh, he's a good player and in excellent form at the moment. And he wasn't in the team at the start of the season, yeah. Marcus. And he looks so he's in a really good mood today. Will he, <laughs> will he still be smiling at 10 to 3, I wonder? Now, another player that really uh, impressed us in that live game against Walsall, Ray, was Mark Kinsella, who was ever present last season, uh, signed a new five-year contract with the club last season as well. He's a Republic of Ireland international and is a, a, a dynamo in the middle of the team, isn't he? Yeah, he's done very well indeed. He's a good user of the ball. He gets forward, he scores his goals, and uh, he just keeps the team ticking over. Here we see the head goal that he scored. It's a fantastic header. Now, he ran a long way from midfield to get that. Another fine strike here coming up on the half volley. Just turns it back across the goalkeeper and into the far corner. But he's, he's all round midfield players exceptional. I think they're very strong in the midfield section, Charlton. Well, one man who's benefited from uh, the service of Kinsella and Robinson is Andy Hunt. 
21 this season. 16 of those goals, Nigel, have come away from home. Yeah, as we saw against Walsall, you can find the back of the net. He's good at the far stick, but he can leave the line on his own. He can play with the partner up there. I mean, he's had Svensson, he's had Pringle up there with him, he's had Clive Mendonca. So whoever's played up there with him, he's still scored the goals, which is a good sign. And uh, obviously didn't score enough in the Premiership last year at the very highest level. But I think second time around, if they do get their Charlton, which I'm sure they will, next season it'll be better. Yeah. But uh, he's good in the air, as I said, and got a lethal left foot. Yeah, he got seven in 34 last season, so he would love to go back there next season and prove the doubters wrong. I'm sure it? they all would, uh, Marcus. Last year must have been a massive disappointment to them, and that only seven goals in 34 starts isn't that good a return. And the Premier League is a different kettle of fish. Well, in goal, Dean Kiley, who has been outstanding since uh, his million-pound move from Bury, missed just the one game this season. But, of course, he did have that extraordinary moment against Swindon last week, which uh, even he couldn't really explain. Yeah, I think it goes down as a, an own goal, unfortunately, but he's been absolutely tremendous for Charlton since he's been there. I mean, 17 clean sheets in 40 games, as you said, but that's uh, just parried into his own net, and that happens. I'm sure he'll be trying to make up for that today. But it has to be said also that last year when Berry went down, I mean, he had a phenomenal number of clean sheets mm. as well, and that's why Charlton have gone in and taken him. And, and it's he's interesting a Republic to hear him uh, as well. he, in the Football League review this week, he was saying that sheer hard work is the, the success or the reason for his success and the, and the club's success this season. Well, they all work hard. That's what it's all about. If you don't work hard, you don't win anything, do you? The basics of the game of football is to work hard and then obviously do the skill things at the same time. But if you don't work hard, you don't get anything out of the game. And goalkeepers are a great example. Most goalkeepers are a great example to outfield players how hard they actually train and work. Mm. What about his opposite number today, Ray? Nicky Weaver, the England under-21 keeper. Great things being said about him in the early part of the season. Just a, a couple of rare mistakes in recent weeks. <coughs> We've probably had the probably the best three goalkeepers we've spoken about today, Dean, Nicky and Mike Taylor in the, in the first division and they've all had a little bit of a, an error every now and then and Nicky's, Nicky's the same, I saw Nicky play at Queen's Park Rangers, I saw him sorry, at Crystal Palace the other week and he was absolutely outstanding, he kept City in the game uh, and he made two or three fantastic saves um, but I think quite rightly people are talking about him as being quite exceptional in years to come, he's still yeah. only a young man. Yeah. Well, last time out, Nicky and Manchester City were involved in a top-of-the-table clash at Barnsley. It didn't go their way at all. John Curtis' first senior goal after four minutes. Not much that Weaver could have done about that. And Craig Hignett with the second for Barnsley before half-time. Typical finish from him. Sean Gotha did pull one back. But uh, Joe Royal wasn't exactly brimming with uh, delight about his side's performance after that game was in and that's why this one is even more important now Nigel I suppose. Well I suppose if, if you want to get into the uh, automatic position which Man City do and Joe believes they can still do I mean you've got to win your home games but you've got to pick things up away from home as well I mean the form guide there shows that they're not obviously in, in there they're in the bottom half which isn't good but the thing is all you need to do is put a, a, put a run together they've got a game in hand which will take them into second spot if they win it so it's all to play for still it's, it's wide open yeah. Charlton's still top of that form guy despite that he defeated against Swindon. There's Manchester City in 16th place at the moment, but of course the comfort for them are the fact that Ipswich are there as well. Yeah. Well, it they've really got a big game against Norwich today as well, isn't it? So with Birmingham on a good run, uh, it does put the pressure on these two today to try and get three points. Mm. It, it really is an almost impossible to, uh, division to try and predict. What do the City supporters think of the recent wobble? Is it a blip or something more serious? Well, I wouldn't say it was a blip, it's just, you know, the performances of other teams. They play to their strengths every time they come to Main Road and, you know, uh, they're always trying to pull out the results. It's a big club, so, you know, it's like their cup final every time they come to Main Road. It's mainly through the midfield, and players just not performing to the true potential. So I think um, Joe might have got the mix wrong, I think he's brought Jamie Pollock back when he's got people like Tony Grant on the bench. I think if you'd have asked us at the start of the season what we thought <coughs> would be a realistic position, I think we'd be delighted where we are. We've got two games in hand, I don't see any problem. Oh, there's a lot of people saying a lot of things about City, but um, we've got quite a few games to play yet, and um, us supporters, we won't give up. If we get Madison back before the end of the season, the rest of the... they better look out. I mean, that'll be the crunch point. If we get Madison back, we'll be back. They've got to win today. If they lose today, I think they're going to struggle to get in the playoffs, I think. Win today, and the rest will be history. We'll be back up there where we belong.
mixed opinions as always. Um, I think perhaps the most interesting point, one of the guys early on saying that if you'd asked him at the beginning of the season, mm -hmm they would be delighted to be fourth at the moment, isn't yeah, that's and that's right. probably right, isn't it? It is, yes. And, and of course, you've always got supporters that want to pick the side as well. They know better than Joe Royal. You know, <laughs> Joe's forgotten more than those supporters will ever know. Um, but it is all about opinions, Marcus, and they're entitled to theirs. Mm. Well, they do have uh, the comfort of knowing that back in November at the Valley, they beat Charlton by a goal to nil. Sean Gota was the match winner, one of his 24 for the season. Good header as well, wasn't it? Fine ball in from Horlock. A big win for them at the time. Yeah, well at the time actually they were in the middle of a 10 game run with uh, out losing, but Charlton since then have uh, had much the better of things of course. Uh, let's hear from the Manchester City manager Joe Royal. Earlier he spoke to Alan Bentley. Joe, I don't think there's any disguising results over the last few weeks haven't gone to plan. What has been the problem, do you think? Um, hard to define, Alan, because the, the two games we've just lost, we probably didn't deserve to, to lose. Uh, having said that, we've won one or two earlier on in the season and perhaps we, we didn't deserve to win. So you just take it as a matter of course over the season. Um, if I had to sort of do a praise of the whole thing, we've not quite scored the goals that we should have done. and We've been a little bit slack of the back, uh, slacker than we had been previous to that. What does this mean in terms of the bigger picture, in terms of promotion and the divisional <coughs> title? Well, it, it means the game against Charlton is certainly massive for us because uh, should they beat us, uh, it will certainly make it very hard for us to pass them before the end of the season, even with a quarter of a season to go. Um, should we beat them, all of a sudden it's a different picture, so it, it, it is a massive game. You know Marcus in the studio thinks Charlton are home and hoes, don't you, Jim? Yes, um, I've heard him before say that for a, a while, and if for no other reason we're determined to prove Marcus <laughs> wrong. I keep telling him the same. Yeah. And do you have a wish for a normal season, Joe? We've just been talking about your Oldham and Everton days. I wouldn't recognise one if it came along. I mean, quite honestly, I just wouldn't recognise a normal season. Uh, it, it seems to be relegation, cups or, um, or promotion. And um, here we are again. It's a nice end this time. It's the promotion. It's a much nicer pressure where we are now than where we were a couple of years ago when we, we had to win the last game of the season to have a chance of staying up. You talked earlier about the problem scoring goals. You brought Lee Mills in. What does he add to the squad, Jim? Well, he's a proven goal scorer in this division. I think he got 23 to 25 goals in total last year in this division. Uh, he's a little bit ring rusty at the moment. He hasn't played for a while, but um, we'll soon get some sharpness into him. And uh, I'm sure that he'll, he'll score goals for us. It's important that he's done it before with Bradford, do you think? Well, he knows the course. He, he has scored goals in, in this division for, for Bradford, for Port Vale, for Wolves. So uh, he's a proven goal scorer. Thanks for talking to us, Jeff. You're welcome. Cheers. Well, I'm glad I'm providing the inspiration for Manchester City. <laughs> uh, no Lee Mills, of course, today, but he does remain uh, supremely confident despite this little wobble. Yeah, he does, and I think quite rightly so as well. They've got 32,000 people watching at home every week, um, but they have to start winning, Marcus. It's, it's no point um, having all those supporters there if they're not going to turn in and get results. And I think today is a very, very big day for them and a very difficult day for them. Of course, when they were struggling, Nigel, um, a couple of seasons ago, the home form in particular was so poor because those 32,000 fans used to, to get on their backs. I is that going to be a problem, do you think, in the closing weeks of the season if things don't pick up quickly? Well, I think today, as Ray said, is a very important day for them. If they can get a win against Charlton, then uh, you know, they can still keep plugging away and try and catch Charlton. If it's a draw today, I mean, I think that suits, suits Charlton anyway. But uh, for Man City with the game in hand, if they can get back in that second spot, they've been in the top four all season, Marcus, which is a credit to them all at Man City and the job that Joe, Willie Donachie, Asa Hartford, they've all done behind the scenes, clearing out players, bringing new blood in. I mean, that supporter who said, well, at the start of the season, you know, we're looking to say, well, if you get in the playoffs, it's been a great season. They're now looking because you've been in there all season to get automatic promotion. Joe will be looking for that. But Man City are one of those clubs like Sunderland from the first division can go into the premiership and most probably survive mm. because of the support and the fan base they have. All the other teams, that, that even the Charltons, it's going to be very difficult for them to get up and stay up like it did for Barnsley, like it does for Bolton. Mm. Um, maybe Joe's right and says that the premiership needs clubs like Man City. Yeah, uh, he may live to regret those words, of course. Uh, <laughs> let's hear from Alan Kerbishley, Joe's opposite number today. Uh, he is now talking to Alan Bentley. No problem. Alan, you look calm, but there's a huge sense of, anti sense of anticipation about this one, isn't there? Well, it's a big game. I don't think anyone can, can deny that. And, um, you know, uh, I think Man City are looking at it that uh, if they get a result today, they, they boost the gap somewhat. And if, and if we can get a result, then we can go further away. So, yeah, big game. I mean, do you see yourselves as almost home and host if you win that? No, I think that uh, anyone who's been in football 
you know, with a quarter of a season left, they know our, uh, there's so many points at stake and we play, what, six or seven games within a month. Things can change so quickly. Uh, all we do know is that we can see the finishing line yeah. and that's all we've said to our boys. There is a finishing line there for us if we can get a majority of wins and uh, perhaps the others can't see that at the moment. But, uh, you know, there's a gap there and we've got to try and keep that gap the same. And uh, Or if it gets eaten into, that's what the gap's for. I mean, have you set yourself a points target? We haven't perhaps set ourselves a points target, but we know that if we can win a certain amount of games, then perhaps a couple of clubs can't catch us. Mm. And, uh, you know, as, as every week goes by, if, if, if we don't win or the other teams don't win, then that's one less we've got to get. And, uh, no. I, I, you know, as I said, there's a long way to go. Um, we've got to be consistent in the running, mm. and um, hopefully we can. And then we can start thinking about other things. But there's no one at my football club, and you can ask any of the players as they walk through here, no one is remotely thinking that we're up. What about today? You played very well at the Valley without getting the result. What about today, Alan? Very well against Man City. I, I, yeah, I mean, it was a good game. And uh, even then, you know, I looked at Man City and thought, well, you're a strong side and you're going to be there. Um, we know what we're up against. It's a, it's, a, it's a big stadium and a big atmosphere and everything else, and we've got to cope with it. But uh, that's what we're in it for. These big games are what we're in it for, and uh, you know we're looking forward to it. Thanks for talking to us, Alan. Well, he's playing everything with a, a straight bat, as you'd expect. But Ray, is there any danger that because they're almost there, they might lack just a little bit of motivation in the closing weeks? You've said almost, Marcus. You've been saying they're up. <laughs> motivation just would not be a problem. I think that's the least of Alan's problems, Marcus. Those players have experienced it last year. Uh, had a rocky ride in the Premiership, and they'll want to get back there. He won't. He won't have any problem with motivation. I would imagine that dressing room, just before the players go out, he wouldn't have to say a word. It would be the players that are, are driving each other on, and that's the way it should be at football clubs. Uh, the manager should be there to to lead, and that's what Alan's done and, and done very successfully. Well, which way is it going to go today? A Charlton win for me, Marcus. Really, mm. Nigel? It's very difficult but I'm going to go for a home win Man City. I think they need to win today. They need the three points. I think that's what might spur them on today against Charlton, who are most probably the best team in this division. But I think Man City today, with the crowd behind them, I'm going to go for a home win. And there's Alan Brazil again. <laughs> Don't forget, this game is interactive. Sky Digital Channel 404 gives you Sky Sports Extra, which includes the revolutionary player cam option, allowing you to follow your favourites all over the pitch, and when they find themselves in a goal-scoring situation, you can live the moment with them. Remember to push the red button to access our interactive technology and feel part of the action. And it's now time to join our match commentators, who are Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. Well, Manchester City's pitch for the First Division title already looks a lost cause. Only the most cautious are not already accepting that Charlton look invincible. But the chase for the runners-up slot looks like being one of the most exciting climaxes for years. And what a match this would be for City to get themselves back on course. They have Robert Taylor back after a week's hard labour at Lillishall following the calf injury that's kept him out of four of the last six games. It's just as well that he is ready to return as a rib injury to on-loan striker Lee Mills keeps him out along with Lee Peacock who may need surgery for a cartilage problem and Danny Alsop who's out for the season. Paul Dickoff who's on the bench has also been under the weather this week. Ian Bishop is back in midfield so Danny Tiato drops to left back and Danny Granville is among the substitutes. Well, Manchester City in front of an absolute packed house yet again, 4-4-2 uh, this afternoon. Weaver, impressive Weaver in goal. Edgehill, Jobson, Vikens and Teato. I just feel that Edgehill is a very, very important uh, uh, match to play along with Jeff Whit Whitley. We mentioned John Robertson earlier for Charlton in good, good form. And these two, I think, will be looking to double up on Robertson. Whitley helped his pal Edgehill out. The two in midfield, Pollock and Bishop, and then this man left-hand side. For me, he's the match winner on the City side. Kennedy, Barnes for Charlton, must watch Kennedy today. Up front, Taylor, is he 100%? Joe Rall has no option to put him in alongside an impressive what a season this fella's had Sean Gota 
Despite last week's upset against Swindon, there's the minimum of disruption to the Charlton side. Richard Rufus is suspended for collecting 10 bookings, so Carl Tyler, who missed the first seven months after knee surgery, makes his first start of the league campaign. Greg Shields, Eddie Yowds and Andy Todd are still unavailable to Alan Kerbishley because of injury, so centre-half Jonathan Fortune, who was in the victorious Mansfield side at Rotherham in Friday's live game, returns from his loan spell and goes straight onto the bench as cover. With Clive Mendonca still out, Andy Hunt is paired again with Matt Svensson, who's seeking his first goal for Charlton. And same for Charlton Athletic. I always feel here, Robert, Main Road, the width is so important. And Charlton with Newton and Robinson, I think it's going to suit their game today. Kennedy's had an impressive uh, season with Charlton, apart from that blip against Swindon. But the back four of Barnes, who's got to look after Kennedy. Brown, Tyler, Powell, and then the two wide players, Newton and Robinson. I really feel if they get in the game here for Charlton, they'll cause problems. Stewart working hard in there, Kinsella, you know, a lovely striker of the ball, passer, good competitor in there. And up front, Spence, no goal, but works his socks off. Hunt is a danger on corner and crosses. Charlton may be 12 points clear, but they're not taking anything for granted. That lead could be down to six points if they were to lose today and then other teams were to do some catching up on Tuesday because Charlton's next match after this isn't until Wednesday when they take on Grimsby at home. Manchester City, whatever they've done of late, have made a habit of doing it the hard way and taking it right to the end of the season and it looks like being another nervous run-in for Joe Royal's team. And it's not a bad run-in, Rob. If they can get a result today, it's not a bad run-in for City. It's the expectations of a big club that can sometimes heap pressure upon players. How will they respond to it today? Manchester City, one of five teams to beat Charlton this season, but no one has yet done a league double over them. Can City do it after the break? of a fascinating ground, Main Road, filled to capacity for Manchester City's biggest game of the season so far. Fourth against first at the top of the first division, can City close the gap or will Charlton take another step towards the Premiership? Let's rejoin our match commentators, Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. Two goalkeepers among the very best in the division today, but Nicky Weaver held up his hands and took the responsibility for two of Queen's Park Rangers' goals in City's 3-1 defeat here. And Dean Kiley at the other end is keen to banish the memory of his blip against Swindon last week. But as both managers would admit, they've saved more points than they've cost this season, those two men between the sticks. And the player cam for the first 15 minutes of this exciting contest. Mark Kinsella, the Charlton midfielder, for Sky Digital viewers on Channel 404. As good as a full house here at Main Road, as Sean Gota, Robert Taylor and Ian Bishop between them get this contest underway. Manchester City, without a win in their last five games, have seen their promotion bid come off the rails a little, but they've been helped by the fact that none of the teams around them have really got a good run together to challenge them sufficiently but this would be a big win for them if they could collect three points here today against the first division leaders Vikings looked for Taylor little knocked down to Sean Gota whose aim was to put Pollock through but Chris Powell gets it away but I thought Gota was going to let fly there Powell covering up in the end Pollock who's actually playing the right hand side we thought he'd play in there but Whitley's gone inside alongside Bishop Pollock wide on the right Edgehill, the captain, to take the throw in. And here's Sean Gota, who really has had the Midas touch in goal scoring terms. Taylor! Oh. Oh. Now that's what you want as a striker. Your first touch, a nice first touch. Makes the space on his left foot. Kylie beaten. Oh, just past that post. Lovely spin from the big fellas. Bending back, but not enough. And this is what City wanted a bright, bubbly start. Almost the opener for Taylor. Well, they're surprised and delighted to have Robert Taylor in the team. Joe Royal had virtually ruled him out of his plans earlier in the week when he went off to Lillishall to have 
treatment on that calf injury. But it turned out that the uh, injury was down to nerve damage rather than muscular. He immediately came back into focus. Hunt on the charge, and Weaver very alert. The times we've seen, we've seen Nick, uh, Nicky Weaver do this, so, you know, in, in Manchester City games, plays like a sweeper. Hunt was always on the end of that. Good ball from Stewart. Hunt tried to get the flick on, but he was being held down there by Richard Jobson. Yeah, Jobson has got to be in the can so careful when the ball's wide, because Hunt is very good in the air. And they'll look to use that aerial ability from here. Carl Tyler has come forward as well, as has Steve Brown. Kinsella, the taker of the kick, and there was a foot of uh, Tyler that went straight into the side of Richard Jobson's head. Wow, this could be nasty. Let's go, Jobson. He's just beginning to get up here. But what is Tyler doing with his foot that high? That is very dangerous indeed, in the side of the head. No, no, he's no, he's no right to go for that. And the first decision for John Kirkby to make, how to deal with that situation. The referee decides that a word with Tyler is sufficient. Ah, bright start, we know this is going to be such a tight match, Rob. But Joe Royal will be looking and say, come on, if we get on top of him earlier, get the crowd behind us, you know, we're on to victory here. And he's got a bright start. Well, Joe Royal's team have defended stoutly in the main this season. They and Charlton share the best defensive record in the division. I'll also be aware, Rob, as well, Charlton's great away record. And they are dangerous with the width. Charlton going for a club record 12th away league victory of the season today. Talking about wet, the width, Robinson in a good form, but so is this fella, and he's got tremendous pace, Newton. Not only will he be trying to get forward, he'll be watching, he'll be doubling up with Barnes on the threat of Mark Kennedy. Steve Brown's kick. Up goes Svensson and gets the knock down to Andy Hunt. Newton has turned up in the box. Pollock gets it away. Here's Tiato. Good play from Tiato. His touch had to be perfect, and it was. He was cool there under pressure because Hunt was closing in behind him. Brown now looking to release Newton. If there's anything City struggle here, Rob, for me, it's pace at the back or lack of it. And that's why Charlton all of a sudden are playing probing balls, trying down the side and try again behind them. Newton, cleared by Bishop, because transfer deadline day looms this Thursday, and the indications from Manchester City are that they will be in the market for a defender. Joe Royal has inquired about uh, Colin Calderwood and, it appears, Craig Short as well in the last week. Andy Morrison still sidelined and not now expected back in the team until mid-April at the earliest. There's Newton. Svensson. Bishop gets it away to Edgehill. This is Gota. Pollock. Close to big Robert Taylor and his physical strength against Taylor's, but Taylor's first touch of the ball was excellent in the game. 21 goals this season for Robert Taylor, the majority of them for Gillingham before his move to Main Road. Here's Bishop. Pearl. I think he, he combines well with John Robertson down the left-hand side for Charlton. Johnson was Gota. Ian Bishop to Taylor. Looking for Kennedy, but it's uh, Barnes who gets there. Yeah, he's, he's just misplaced. He's trying to get it to Kennedy as quick as he can, and Barnes knows he's got to keep tight to the Irishman. He just clips the ball in for fun with his left foot, this guy. Scored two goals against... Norwich in Manchester City's last victory. 
City have gone five since then without winning. Here's Tiato. Tyler looking at the position Ooh. of his goalkeeper, and he was so out on the fringe. That's there. out. He's in trouble. That's out. This is out the box. I'm sure it is. I think his feet's in, but look at his hand. That's definitely out. Is he going off here? Is he going off? This is outside the box for me. Well, John Kirkby initially thought he was in, and I think it was his assistant who drew his attention. He's off. What's he doing? He's reaching into his pocket. Oh, this is it. Oh, what was it going to be? What colour? Tension with Alan Kirkby. What's he thinking about? This could be disaster for Charlton. The protests are long and loud from Dean Kiley, but he's worried about the card, as is Alan Kirbishley. What's it going to be? Mm. It's yellow. Ooh, the, you can hear the boos all around Main Road. Alan thinks, thank God for that. Oh, dear. Well, in the interests of the game, probably the uh, right decision. But Dean Kiley looked a very worried man. Here's Kennedy with the free kick. Will the punishment be even more severe after that offence from Kylie from what City can produce? Kylie is tipped it away. And Pollock gets in front of the goalkeeper and goes down. Here's Tiato. Back across from Kennedy. What a header from Tyler. What a ball from Kennedy. Well charged down there by Tiato. Here's Kennedy. Skipped away from Kinsella and Taylor has quickly got in front of his man. Vikins hits it and Gota inches away. He's always going away from goal from Vikins. It's great play again from Kennedy. Taylor just lays it back, hit the target. Always going away on his right foot, Vikins. And relief for Charlton, double relief. You can hear the boos still ringing out round Main Road. Well, Dean Kiley it was who dealt initially with the uh, free kick, but should he still have been on the field that's the major talking point from the first nine minutes of the match I think he was talking to the referee saying ref, ref come on I thought I was in it wasn't intentional I'm sure I was in and the referee took his time as well didn't he he took his time Mr Kirkby just to think about it and something else to think about as well Rob we'll see in a minute possible penalty when Pollock just got in front of him and again, Kylie involved. Jobson's kick. Bishop. Tiato and Gota here is offside. Oh. Wow, Charlton really under pressure here. And Kylie, well, he's been superb, made a rick against Swindon. Watch this. Pollock just gets in front there. Does he catch him? No, I think it's a good decision, referee. Dean Kiley, I'm sure, wants to see the ball in the other half for a little bit, just to give him a bit of respite. It's been a good start to this match from uh, Manchester City. Brown gets it away. Well, they're almost home City, isn't it? Brown and Tyler heavy in the action. Tiao, he's got a nice left foot, this fella, as well. But he'll be looking to hit the strikers, or if it's on, right to the feet of Kennedy. Playing recently in midfield, uh, Danny Tiato. Granville left out. Tiato back in the uh, role for which he was originally bought. Has left back. Well, an encouraging first ten minutes for the home team. what happened against uh, Swindon last week and what's happened in the opening 10 minutes of this uh, contest just how much has it all ruffled Dean Kiley I'll tell you what Rob for one minute Kiley thought he was off don't worry about that he was almost on his knees pleading with an effort Fisher given away to Kinsella Svensson Tiato back well, and this is Jared Vikins. Now Kennedy, Bishop, Taylor. Good play from City. This is Pollock. Taylor moves up on the outside of it. Pollock tries to hit one, and it's blocked by Mark Kinsella. 
City absolutely swarming all over them. And this is where they've got to be careful, just offside, Rob. But, you know, they tend to push forward, forward, pressure. The crowd are sucking them in as well. And suddenly Hunt, we keep saying how good he is in there. Look at this, this is just offside. Two centre-halves going for the same ball. Manchester lad used to play his football at Berry. Hunt. There's Pollock. And Taylor definitely onside. Played on by Barnes. Taylor. Big Robert Taylor shouldn't be nudged off the ball with Kinsella. Whitley was an attack and Paul. He just had to nod it on. Teatro's down in a heap. Well, Svensson, an aggressive type, and Tiato, who's already had a shoulder problem this week, injured again. Yeah, I don't see too much wrong with that, to be honest. I think it's the way Tiato's fallen. But Taylor here, if he nods on, look at the support he's going to have here. Two centre-halves going for the same ball. Taylor's played on with a full-back. Just knock it on. Whitley's got pace and pushed off it by Kinsella. That shouldn't happen. What a weakness there already for uh, Danny Tiato, who uh, suffered some bruising around that uh, shoulder last week. Yeah, Tiato, no problem, Grand Blue sitting on the bench, he could come on. The tell for me and for an Aussie, Joe Rowe knows he's tough, strong, plays well with Kennedy. Kittens with the free kick. Here's Stewart. Charlton are not allowed to play here, are they? Since the get it, it's press, press, press. Fisher. Tiato. By Vikings. to leave it to uh, Dean Kiley. Oh, he's right on the edge of his line again there. Uh, Hunt's claiming he's jumping early. He said, no way, ref. I'm off the ground first. Jobson a little bit flat-footed. It's the elbow, you can see that's how Jobson don't go off the ground. Hunt's left arm on his shoulder. Well, we've... Uh... Caught Tiato on the hop there, and uh, Newton almost took advantage. Beacons trying to get City out of trouble. Yeah, it's a tasty game, this Rob. No one's given a quarter, no one's given an inch here. And the challenge, the pressing, the challenging. Edge Hill retrieving it after Hunt had uh, won the initial battle. Yeah, I agree with that. It looked a free kick to me. Edge Hill on Hunt. This goes a little bit high here, Richard Edge Hill. See that? It's late. Sometimes he does this, he loses composure, the captain. Carl Tyler with a free kick. Tiato. Here's Taylor. Kota. afternoon for sure because is it you've got to be on top of your game in a match like this Tiato to Taylor don't want to let this fell that's one on his left one on his right like to get on his right foot as quick as possible Bob Taylor just try to bend it looking for power that doesn't trouble Kylie Kinsella Deakins takes charge. This is Brown, Kennedy. Coach is in the middle, Taylor's not in there to join him now. And if he just got his, if he got his head up earlier, Gota was one-on-one. -on -one. He's so confident, this young man, when he gets it right down on the, you know, on the, the, the touch line and the... He just feels he can get his foot round it and, and he can hit the back post, sweet left foot. Oh. Oh. Kennedy's 
kick in towards Bishop. One fall for Wickley, Stewart ensures that. Retrieved here by Ian Bishop. Now Whitley tucked inside to Jamie Pollock. It's Whitley's ball in. Cleared by Tyler, only to Jobson. Now Kennedy. Uh, he's won the, well, I think he's won the free kick, Rob. Barnes, yeah, Barnes just fallen for it. I don't think Kennedy was going to get. You know, he just takes a little touch towards the byline. I don't think he was going to get it, but look, Barnes rides him out. Well, the linesman thinks so. Kennedy's kick. Jamie Pollock! Wonderful save! Well, if Kylie was at fault earlier, he's certainly a toad now. Kennedy's bottom again. Excellent. And here's Pollock, who was denied. I'll tell you what, it's a fine header and a great save for me. Beautiful ball, Pollock, who's just coming, he's playing right hand side, suddenly gets a free header, good header, punches it, and Kylie at full stretch. He's going in the top left hand corner, Kylie's left was more a little bit central, good palming away, acrobatics from Kylie. That's why the goalkeeper has been so important to them since his move from Berry last summer. Hey! So to Pollock, I think if Pollock had a head, got it in the corner, with power on it. I don't think Kelly could have got there, but this fella, he's got to be closed down. We said it at the top of the programme, Barnes, big job for Barnes to close, close, close. Put him on his right foot. Mark Kennedy, now the player cam for Sky Digital viewers on Channel 404. Here's Powell. Now Robinson. Hunt. Strike from Stewart. Uh, smashing plays it down the left hand side. Robinson, first time we've really seen him, and I look at the touch from Hunt, lays it beautiful. It's a good yard wide in the end, but a nice build up down the left from Charlton. Graham Stewart, who played under Joe Royal at Everton, indeed part of that FA Cup winning team five years ago. Vikings, Edgehill. This is Taylor. Bishop, Whitley's made a break through the middle. Good play from Barnes. Barnes has done ever so well here. He's a right fullback. He suddenly he spotted the danger. Round he comes. Look at Whitley. Whitley's clean through the middle. If Barnes doesn't come round on cover, excellent. Tiato. Kennedy. Oh, well, you know, and that throw in there, there's at least five, maybe six bodies all round the ball. City, excellent start to the match, no goals. Very close, Taylor's effort, Pollock's header. Now and again, Charlton on the attack. Have got a little bit of pace, and Robinson down the left-hand side proved. Nice little build-up a moment ago. Bearing in mind how concentrated the pressure from the home team has been, Charlton can feel quite satisfied to have come through this period of the match unscathed. Well, it's a free kick that did on Robinson, but Pollock just caught him. He's had a, he's a few things to think about, hasn't he? You can see Robinson holding his hip. Pollock just caught him. Newton. Stewart. Here's Svensson. Chops. Kennedy. Here's Richard Edgehill. Tyler Kinsella 
Bonus. There's a lot of pace in the ball from Vikings, and this pitch at Main Road is not as flat as it used to be. A little bobble. Weaver getting away with it. Edgehill. Cleared by Powell. Vikings. Now Bishop. This is Kennedy. The Australian Tiato to Bishop. Jamie Pollock. And Tiato's ball in is beyond Gota, but Robert Taylor is trying to get there. It's Robinson who does though. Smashing ball from Tiato. He's struggling to get it before it got to the, the byline. Somehow got his left foot round it. That little touch killed it slightly. Give him a chance. Good ball to the far post. No one there. Kennedy trying to play Tiato in again here. Disappointing cross this time. It's Newton who gets it away. Vikings. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, behind to you and Roberts after 19 minutes and they just uh, are suffering the dreaded wobble again. You no, know, Brian Hamill's feeling mixed feelings, I would imagine. Long career, having played and coached at Ipswich. Tom goes out the window in derbies, we know that. I just feel if City can win today with the running they've got, Rob, I just wonder. This is massive for them today. Especially if it hits you, slip up. Barnes with the throw in. Cleared by Ian Bishop. There to see City. Well, you'd expect that, wouldn't you? So after a good start, City powering towards Charlton's goal, but Charlton is still dangerous. They're trying to prove here. Newton shot. I remember Newton scoring top of it. She scored an absolute gem in the playoffs against them. But Hunt's a threat. He's looking lively. He's looking sharp. It falls to Newton. Tries to power it with his left foot. Well wide. Hill. This is Pollock. Bishop. Good ball. Kennedy. Newton holding up Kennedy's progress. Yeah, that's when Newton, I think, is going to be really important for Charlton today. Getting back on Kennedy. One or two late little challenges going in there. It's been a very industrious display from both teams so far, fully committed. Oh, you see Weaver really watching that ball as it came back into his box there. It's really bare and bobbly back there. Go to his touch. Both of these uh, teams still to go to Graham Souness's Blackburn in the run-in. Indeed, it's uh, Manchester City's last match of the season at Ewood Park. i tell you what, what a challenge that was. Edge Hill on pole. This is what you call a cruncher. Look at this. Mm, that's what it means, this game. Edge Hill. Stewart. Kinsella. Vikings. This is Edge Hill. Oh, 
Brown and Tyler are definitely up to the physical challenge against Gota and Robert Taylor. Two big strong lads, Brown using his strength there. Tyler's already got a couple of great headers in. Free kick given away by uh, Andy Hunt. Charlton with Huddersfield and Ipswich still to face in their run-in, both at home. Looks on paper a fairly uh, smooth closing programme for the uh, London side. And of course last week's result against Swindon proved that nothing can be taken for granted. Rob, you're right, but I think Charlton are playing well enough. You know, if you suddenly hit a slump and the confidence goes and you're not playing well, that's a problem, but that's not the case with Charlton. This is Tieto. Kennedy. Played by Brad. You see as well, Rob, one thing with Charlton is they dig in, they're gritty, they're determined. They're not a soft side with good football, you know, they can battle when they have to. They managed to keep uh, plenty of the squad around from their last promotion campaign, so they have players who are, are well versed in the pressures that they'll face. Last time, of course, they came with a late roll. This time, they're in front and looking to stay there. Andy Hunt looking to put uh, Svensson away, but he's offside. Well, there was a shout of hand ball there. Robinson was clear on the right onside. Svensson through the middle, just off, I think. There's a ball's played there. He's not. He's onside. Then he's on half. Maybe a little let off for City. Two against one. Do you know what? I don't. You know. I've seen his offside draw, but if you're in your own half, surely that's not too hard a decision from the linesman to make. Gota. Tiato. Newton. Stewart to Svensson. Sure, Stewart's doing well here for Charlton Rob. You know, he doesn't mind a bat line on the centre midfield. Benson. And Seller looking for Hunt, but again it's offside. Yeah, well, Hunt doesn't believe it, but I believe that you know the line was there. Hunt just straight beyond it. And Seller can pass the ball. What about the far side, the right fullback, right in front of the linesman? Just at the last minute, the last second, stepping back. Here's Vikins. Oh, we'll give it away to Svensson. Oh, what, a, what a chance that is. Hunt was away there. Svensson finds him, hunts in. Poor pass. And Vikins mightily relieved for it was he who gave the ball away. And another offside flag. Both sides squeezing up now, but there's no pace through the middle with Manchester City. If this ball is better, he's clean through. Watch this. Right, just in his path. It's a poor pass from Svensson. Vikings for me, he doesn't catch Hunt if Hunt's in front of him. Newton, now Svensson. Trying a little back flick. Kinsella coming through well, finding Newton. Good ball in, and Andy Hunt scores, but the flag is up. I'm not sure this is for Hunt, you know, Rob. I'm not sure it's for Hunt, I think it's for Svensson who's standing alongside him. It's, well, the ball comes to Newton, the flag stays down, now the ball's delivered, far post. You can see it's a good decision from the referee, it's not Hunt, it's John Robertson who's come in there. I knew there was someone alongside Hunt. Andy Hunt's goal chalked off. And Alan Kirbishley thought perhaps that he'd seen the breakthrough that his team needed. I think I saw this offside drop. You know, the right in front of Weaver, inside the six yard box. That's interfering with play. Warning though for Manchester City. Bishop. 
And he's played Gota in. Oh, <laughs> wonderful goal. Well, did he mean it? He doesn't care. They don't care. It's the goal their weight of pressures deserve. But at one stage, it never looked like coming. Well, from one end to the other, I'm a Euro. I think he just tries to knock this towards goal. That hits the outside of his right foot. I don't, you know, it's got to be some strike to score here with power. That doesn't happen. Hits the outside of his boot and sails over Kylie. The City fans, 30 odd thousand, don't care. That finds the top corner. Kylie beaten. City 1 0. Well, it's some goal, but I'm sure even Joe Royal admires a little bit of the good fortune that there was about it. It's Sean Gota's 25th of the season, and for a player who was much criticised when he initially came here. That represents an excellent tally and quite a goal to remember too, whether he meant it or not. That's all happening here, isn't it? Oh, Kylie could have been sent off, Charlton scoring offside, and then Gota again. And it's a goal that leaves Sean Gota just one short of his 50th for Manchester City and the 150th of his league career. It's that 19 league goals right on the 18-yard line. He doesn't matter. I don't think he means this, but it finds the top corner. Sean Gota, the man who beat Charlton at the Valley with a second-half goal, scores just past the half-hour mark here to give Manchester City the crucial lead. I have to say, Rob, I thought it was ambitious, you know, because the ball was still high and he tries to volley it. Charlton will look to get back into the game through Andy Hunt, and he is now the spotlight for player camp. Sky Digital viewers on Channel 404 can monitor his progress. <laughs> Norwich leading at Ipswich, Manchester City leading Charlton. What a big turning point in City's season this could be if they were to hang on here and if Norwich were to hang on at Portman Road. Edgehill, though, under pressure from Robinson. Pollock. Thought Rob with the early pressure City had with no goals in Charlton start to look dangerous in the break. You wondered, mm, have they missed the chance? Now Charlton again, they're going to have to come from behind. Against Walsall the other night when they came from behind Charlton. So that's not a problem. So to go two down, it might be more of a problem. Charlton have an attack a problem for City. Tieta. Now Kennedy. Taylor back to Kennedy. He's unlucky there. He's unlucky. But good work from Robinson. Robinson does come off the wing. When he's not getting the ball, he comes looking for it. Jobs. <laughs> Jamie Pollock. Taylor here is on side. Taylor gets another opportunity. And he's lined it up for Jeff Whitley. But Newton was the player backtracking. Barnes leaves it to his goalkeeper. And suddenly Charlton's defence, which has been so secure, looks unsettled. Well, listen, the City, the city fans now are oh, the bane for a second goal. Teato. Riley copes with that one. Kylie. He's had a smashing season, and he just couldn't do anything about Gorter's goal. No way. Action to come. Everton against Newcastle live on Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports Extra. Our coverage starting at 3 o'clock. And our next nationwide league action actually comes up on Tuesday. It's at Oakwell, Barnsley against Fulham, Sky Sports 2 and Sky Sports Extra. Bishop gets on with things, a quick free kick. Oh, by Taylor. Yeah, that just flags up. Taylor can't believe it. But that just shows you City, you know, they, they don't mind it. Ball down, quick free kick. They want a second goal here. It's a decent ball. Taylor challenging, is it an arm up? Yeah, left arm up. Good decision, linesman. The 
City never do things in an uncomplicated uh, fashion. The last two promotions from this division have been on the uh, last day of the season. Indications already that they're going to take it all the way to the end of this campaign, but what a big win this would be if they can hold on. And with no guarantees, here's Kinsella in towards John Robinson. And Weaver again, quickly off his line, but look at Weaver just around him over his shoulder, look at the bobbles and bumps in that goal area, it's not good enough. Well, Alan Kirby's and his team have had the one unlucky break with Robinson being in an offside position when Hunt got the ball in the back of City's net. And that served as something of a wake-up call for the home team. Just when they'd lost a bit of the momentum after their early pressure. And Jobson all over Hunt. Maybe disappointed again, getting on the end of a cross, finding the back of the net. Robinson offside. Kick. Jobson's clearance. Sensing jumping into Jobson. Not one arm, but just absolutely jumping in. And with Jobson, Vikings were having a little push and shove as he went for the ball. You see, he's not even looking at the ball. That's a free kick. It's nine games in all since Matt Svensson scored his last goal, including the back end of his Crystal Palace career. But one goal enough for Manchester City. At the Valley back in November, and Sean Gota, the scorer of that one, has scored the one here that's put City ahead. And Joe Robbie delighted. Seven minutes remaining, or just under seven minutes. Good start, could have got one early on, but now they're in the driving seat, one up. It's 18 goals in his last 20 matches now for uh, Sean Gota, who originally wasn't even supposed to be playing in this match. He was due to be on international duty with Bermuda, but the fact that he scored a hat-trick in their 5-1 win against the British Virgin Islands allowed Bermuda to uh, release him for the second leg. Newton. with the throw. Hunt. Newton. Yeah, Newton hasn't really got going, has he? That's good play. Well, Teato felt that he'd been fouled and pulled out of the way by oh, Newton. That's got to be a free kick. It's got to be a free kick. Teato catches him from behind. Dear, oh dear. I think Newton gets away with that, maybe. But watch this. Teato, he, Newton's about to put it in the box. And he catches him. Clips his hair. Sean Gota having been put through by Taylor with Powell initially snapping away at him, but Tyler making the eventual challenge. It's amazing how end to end it goes. You know, Gota suddenly from down one end with Newton, he's he's almost getting a striking and goals. Good play from Powell. Rob. Edgehill with the throw. Pollock given away by Edgehill to Hunt. to give away a possession, but Hunt now has conceded the throw-in. Gota can't make the most of it. Back from Jared Vikings. This is where Weaver has to be uh, sure-footed. Teato. Kinsella mopping up. Andy Hunt to pat. Uh, the games have played a real good tempo. Spenson. Mitchell going in on Robinson. They're on side here. It's Andy Hunt bearing down on Richard Jobson. City, City do worry me, Rob. They worry me. They're so square at the back, Manchester City. I'm sure with the likes of Kinsella and Stewart in the central midfield, if they get half a yard, they will find the run on this match. I'm not sure they want to be stepping up. 1 0 up. I think it's about right. I've got you. You're not going away from me, man. You know, almost man marking now. Instead of just trying to step up all the time. Tyler's kick. Svensson knocks it back across. Ooh. And Hunt can't turn. It's Jobson's challenge. Turn off. That looked. 
That looked as if that could have been from behind. Hunt immediately looked at the referee. Jobson for me took him from behind. Robinson, and it took a deflection. Oh. And Weaver stood looking at it and could do nothing about it as Jolton get level. Incredible. Weaver, well, the look says all, oh, doesn't it? He can't do anything about this, just like Kyle, he couldn't. It's a snapshot, Newton on the shoulder. Look at Weaver stranded. No chance whatsoever. You have to say Robinson comes in off one wing, Newton off the other, and the two wingers combined, rather fortunately, but that doesn't matter. Charlton back in the match, 1-1. Robinson took the credit, but it deflected in off his teammate Sean Newton. It's Manchester City 1, Charlton 1. And Manchester City stunned by that. Well, fair due to them, they're both, you know, they're both wide men. And when they're, you know, they're 1-0 down, both have come inside, infield, got involved in the game. A little bit fortunate, Sean Newton coming in off the right wing, trying to just link up with Robinson. Robinson drives it, hits him on the shoulder, Weaver's going the other way, no chance, 1-1. One, one. Change of fortune that uh, Alan Kirbishley had hoped for. Bishop, Taylor. Jobson's header for Stewart. Just there, Robert still in Jobson there, caught Hunt. Ah, this is lively. Edgehill. Teatro. Beacons. Teatro. To Svensson. Newton looking for Robinson again. I'll tell you what, Robinson's being a bit a pest, isn't he? He's beginning to be a pest, he's coming in off the wing, looking to get in behind them, there's lack of pace. The City Heartland. Bishop. There's Teato. Whitley. Tyler cuts out Edge Hill's ball, and Hunt here has got Svensson up ahead of him. City do have plenty back, but Hunt has ghosted past Jobson and right across. I tell you what, Rob. Svensson can't keep it in, but Svensson isn't going to score. He's not going to score for Charlton if he doesn't believe in himself. Watch when Hunt's wide. Look what Svensson is. Does he believe it? He stops almost here. Teatro gets back. If Svensson keeps going, he side foots that in. And the City get equalised, but just me for sorry. Charlton get equalised. This is what we're talking about the tackle from Jobson. Catches him. Jobson was slipping over, and that bad penalty there, he definitely caught him for me. But a few seconds later, Chartmore level, doesn't matter. It's going to be two minutes on stoppage time. This is what this is what Charlton don't want to be doing on the stroke at half time, giving stupid free kicks away here. Because Kennedy will just put it in the danger area with accuracy. And Sean Newton getting back against Teatro, you can see him holding him off with his left arm. This is danger time. That's a, that's a enough time, Rob, to take it. It's a matter of uh, seconds left, so Kennedy will have to get on with things. Robinson is stalling him by claiming that the ball's not in the right place. Well, the referee's pointing to Kennedy. Get wider, get wider. He's got to hurry up. Time's run now. 
John Robinson taking the law into his own hands. There's no way the ball was there, it was out on the touchline. That's why Robinson's screaming. Well, he was never 10 yards as the kick was whipped in by Kennedy. And we get to half time with a scoreline of one all in a competitive <laughs> but even match. John Robinson's chasing the linesman. The linesman's running away at the ref. Charlton players are furious. But it was right on the touchline, that's why he's screaming. Well, a little bit fractious at the end, but maybe that's a sign of just how competitive it's been. Sean goes having put Manchester City ahead with what turned out to be a great finish. Touch of fortune about that, and also Charlton's equaliser deflected in by Newton from Robinson's shot, diverting it past Nicky Weaver. Robinson really pumped up for this game. So too was City, who had a scare when Charlton had a goal ruled out before City took the lead through Sean Goethe's, as it turned out, wonderful finish. But Charlton levelled when Robinson's hit, deflected in off the shoulder of Sean Newton. There are jeers going around the stadium at half-time as Dean Kiley has become the latest player to confront the referee. So it's ended with discord, but it's been an enthralling game at half-time. Manchester City won, Charlton won. US golf coming up for you next week. One of the highlights of the tour, the Players' Championship. Over a million dollars up for grabs for the winner. David Duval will be defending his title against the likes of Tiger Woods, Colin Montgomery, Darren Clark and Lee Westwood. Our coverage begins on Thursday afternoon from 4.30. It is only on Sky Sports 2. Lots to talk about after 45 minutes at Main Road. It's Manchester City 1, Charlton 1. Ray and Nigel are with me. Uh, let's clear up a few issues. First of all, Charlton's disallowed goal. We saw Alan Kirbishley shaking his head after it was disallowed, but I think you're both in agreement with the officials, aren't you? I think we'd have to be, Marcus, yeah. Uh, Sean sure Newton gets in a, a super ball, it has to be said, and uh, Hunty finishes it very well. But right on the far side there, Robinson's just creeping in, and he was in an offside position when that ball was played. So that was a good spot. Now, the goals, both with a, a touch of good fortune. First of all, Sean Gota, 25th of the season and is 49th for City. From some parts of the ground, this probably looks like a, a terrific finish, Nigel, but not quite. <laughs> well, you say it's a terrific finish. It's ended up in the back of the net. In the first place, it's a lovely ball for me and Bishop, but he catches that right on his shin come ankle, and that loops up over Kylie, who's got no chance. But they deserved it at this stage. I thought Man City were well on top early on and hadn't got a goal. And then that little bit of fortune gets them in the lead. But then obviously, as we're going to see, there's a little bit of misfortune for them to get Charlton back in the game. And we've been having a discussion here as to who should get the credit. Robinson obviously with the first shot. Newton doing his best to get out of the way. But you want to give him the goal, Nigel. Well, it's, I think if you see the shot from John Robinson there, I don't know if it's going to hit the target or go wide. But it doesn't matter. Sean Newton's made the run across. It's hit him and gone in the keeper's opposite corner. So he's got to claim it. Who do you give it to, Ray? I would agree with Nigel. I, th I th don't even think John Robinson shot, Robinson shot was actually on target. But he's had the effort. I mean, it was his. Oh, it's a good effort. His yeah, attempt, he's it? had the effort. It's a good effort. But uh, you know, he ha he hasn't put it in the net. <laughs> All right. Um, the first talking point: Dean <coughs> Kiley handling the ball. Should he have been sent off? Now the rule says a player is sent off if he denies the opposing team a goal or an obvious goal-scoring opportunity by deliberately handling the ball. Well, he deliberately handles the ball, but there isn't really a goal-scoring opportunity, is there? No, there isn't. No, no I, I, I think it'd have been very unfortunate to be sent off because we were debating whether he should have gone, um, because we have seen goalkeepers go for for handling the ball outside. But obviously, the rules are rules, Marcus. Yeah. And as as Alan said, though, he was down on his knees begging to be kept <laughs> on the pitch, wasn't he? Well, you never know if you're going to get sent off or a yellow card, or he might not have got anything. Some referees might not have given him anything and just given the free kick. But he did handball it outside, and his feet he pulled his feet back inside, but his hands were actually outside. But it wasn't a goal-scoring opportunity. The referee got it right. OK, now there's another very important First Division match taking place today, the East Anglian derby at Portman Road, and it's all Norwich. So far, they lead by two goals to nil. So Ipswich's poor run continues. Ewan Roberts with both of them, although that first one gets a deflection off Fettis, so Nigel, obviously, you'll be giving that to That's an own goal for me. That's an own goal, I think. That's an own goal, Marcus. Yeah. yeah. It's going wide, no, there's I think. no question. And even if it's on target, I think Richard's probably got that covered. But this is magnificent. This is a fantastic goal. Brilliant first touch there from Ewan. 
and a great finish. Yeah, he started it in the corner. 18 goals this season. He's doing well, isn't he? Uh, 18 or 17, depending on whether Thetis gets the credit for the first one. Well, 17 then. <laughs> well, 17. It is 17 then, it isn't is it? 17 <laughs> for the season. He's the striker, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, you two are a couple of old miseries, aren't you? So, at half time at Main Road, it is one apiece. It's lived up to expectations. Remember, Manchester City, five games without a win. They badly need three points today. They're going to have to step it up in the second half. We're back with that in a couple of minutes. Now, Super Sunday today comes from Goodison Park. It's Everton and Newcastle from 3 o'clock on Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports Extra. And on Tuesday night, we've got more First Division football for you from Oakwell. Another game of great significance near the top of the table. It's Barnsley and Fulham from 7, Sky Sports 2 and Sky Sports Extra. Half-time at Main Road, it is Manchester City 1, Charlton Athletic, the First Division leaders 1. There is the view from high above. Always a magnificent sight. And that's where those shots are coming from. Typical grey day in Manchester, no surprise there. Let's have another look at the two goals so far, both with a, a hint of fortune. The first for Mr. Gota, his 25th of the season, 149th of his career, 49th for Manchester City, 18 in 20 games, some record for the Bermudan international. And then the one we're still arguing about, is it Robinson's, is it Newton's? Either way, it's Charlton back in the game. What about some possible substitutions in the second half, guys? Paul Dickoff perhaps could give Manchester City an option? He would. He'd give them a different option of, of pace, Marcus. It'd be little and large as well. But at the moment, they're two large guys, and Brown and, and Tyler are doing quite well against them. Um, but who knows? I think Joe would be delighted with the way City set about the, the opening period. And I think Allen would be chuffed to have gone in one each at half-time. I would expect Charlton to have a little bit more possession now in the second half as the game gets a little bit longer and wider. You tipped um, City before the game, Nigel. Are you still confident? Well, I'm still confident for them, but I think it's been a good match. City played very well without scoring um, early on, but then got their goal and Charlton responded straight away. But uh, it's all to play for in the second half, and I think uh, Charlton will be the happier at the moment with the result. You won't be surprised to hear that John Robinson is claiming that goal. Of course he would. <laughs> Don't blame him, but he won't get it. <laughs> More on that as it develops. Let's rejoin our match commentators, Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. And Blair Cam for the first quarter of an hour of the second half will be on Manchester City's Jamie Pollock for Sky Digital viewers on the Sky Sports Extra. This is of course a stadium that they're planning to leave in 2003 when they hope to be in the new city of Manchester Stadium which is being built in the Eastlands area of the city. It'll be a 48,000 capacity. The main road has always had a very special atmosphere and that has been evident again here today when City made such a cracking start to this contest. But a touch of uh, good fortune about both goals. John Robinson will have quite a fight on his hands if he is going to try and claim that uh, equaliser. Sean Newton diverting it past Nicky Weaver. Yeah, I don't think he was going on target, to be honest. Um, I'd give it to Newton. If given to Newton, it will uh, rank. That's his second goal here at uh, Main Road. He scored in a 2-1 defeat here back in September 96, which is actually the last time that Manchester City beat Charlton at Main Road in a league match. Mind you, half-time Marcus wasn't having it, was he? He said it was Robinson's goal. <laughs> Mind you, what does he know? Here's Andy Hunt. Kinsella. Kennedy. Big cheer at half-time, Robert, on Main Road. And the news came from Portland Road that Norwich will lead Nipswich 2-0. I bet your boots City fans will be thinking, we can beat Charlton here. Ipswich lose. That's the start of the final push to be back in the big time. Well, they've got a match against uh, Stockport to come on Tuesday, such as the level of interest that they're actually beaming it back here. 
And then they face uh, West Brom in their next match here at Main Road. And then they go to Swindon at the start of next month, with Joe Rawl hoping that his team don't come unstuck as Charlton did at home against the uh, division's bottom team. That all changes as well, Rob. Remember, there was jokes flying about Manchester, this, you know, the big derby for City now is Macclesfield, not even Stockport. And yet next year they could be going down their hotel traffic. They'll want a win here today to keep that uh, dream alive. Here's Andy Hunt. Robinson. This is Powell. Hunt. Spencer. Here's Kinsella. Newton. So obviously a great start from Charlton. Great start. Powell. Cut out by Pollock. Go to there, links up with Bishop. He's got Kennedy out to his left. And he looks instead to Jamie Pollock. Now Whitley. Bishop. The good ball from him to Tiato. Not too much goes astray from uh, Ian Bishop's boot. Yeah, he'll do it first time, Ian Bishop, or if he needs to take a touch. It's a good awareness. He knows where players are behind him and always looking for an early pass to the front players. He's been uh, rested in recent matches, another player who has Kevin Horlock on the bench today. Here's John Robinson. And he looks at the heavens, trying to get an early cross in, Hunt was in the box, Benson was in the box. Edgehill just jockeying him well. Good effort. This one there, Alan Kirbish, they what he thinks of his pairing of Hunt. I know he's delighted with Hunt. Svensson, I wonder if Pringle, he's pace and his directness. You might see him play a big part later on. Here's John Robinson. Beyond Hunt off. Any touch at all, Rob. What a ball. What a ball in the box. City fans were laughing a minute ago on his left foot, this time comes on his right foot. Look at Kinsella, check his run, any touch at all, and that was in the net. Well, Robinson, not the most popular character here at Main Road at the moment, after his uh, altercation at the end of the first half over the positioning of Mark Kennedy's free kick. Tyler from Taylor, but now he's giving it away again. And Tyler just got caught late there. I think it was Teatro Cotton. And luckily for the big centre half, he's out in no man's land there. Makes a good challenge on Taylor, then tries to be a little bit clever. He's got his first league game since the last day of last season against Sheffield Wednesday, Carl Tyler. Penalised for the challenge on Beacons. Just think of that chance earlier on the first half of Hunt crossed across the face of the box. That's a striker for me out of confidence. If he'd have kept going, believing that Hunt was going to drag his shot, he side foots it in the empty net. No killer instinct. Well, the strikers thrive on goals, and Spencer has still to register since his move to the Valley. Well, he has been getting up to uh, fitness as well since his move from Crystal Palace. And the only way Robin can turn that around is get in the box, get in the box, believe it's coming to you, believe it's coming to you. And you're going there eight times, you get one, you're back, you know, you're back again, you try and build on that one. You stop him in the danger area, you've got a serious problem. Spencer's moved on to it and he's looked to pick out John Robinson here. And he's lined one up again. Yeah, the match has been going wide, but Weaver was down smartly to his right. Robinson comes inside on his good right foot, let's fly. Weaver take no chance, although it was going wide. Now 
Taylor's helped it on in the direction of Kennedy. Cleared though by Brown. You just got a feeling the next goal wins it. It's end to end, it's tight. Who can sneak a second? It is, it's almost like a boxing match, Rob, when someone suddenly lands a real good punch, the other one hits back straight away. We've seen it so many times today. As soon as Charlton go close, sit it down the other end, like the goal. Well, it's being watched by a boxer today, Manchester's uh, British heavyweight champion, Mike Holden here. Here's Taylor. Cleared by Brown. Whitley. back from Kinsella. Edge Hill. Going back to Mark Kinsella. He's lost out to Bishop. This is Kennedy. Pollock has pulled out to the left in support. He's looked instead, though, to Robert Taylor. Tiato. Good run from him. Taken down by Kinsella, but the advantage played. It's Whitley. Now Edge Hill. Tiao's in trouble as well. Oh, Edge Hill going into a bit of a cul de sac. Kinsella's in trouble here. Tiao for me goes through about three challenges, just knocks it a little bit far in front of him. Now, that, for that is not a booting for me. No chance. Kinsella's entitled to go for the ball. He just knocked the ball, he lost the ball, he got a few inches away from him. Kinsella came in, kept low. I think he's just had the old yellow. Following his goalkeeper, Dean Kiley, and being shown a yellow card. Mm, I didn't see it that way at all. Tiato, the uh, player who was injured. Next FC Baden Rob, was it? Tiato? That's right, Brazil played there. <laughs> City have to keep this momentum up now. They have to start really putting Charlton under pressure again. Firing at attack challenges, closing down, getting it to Kennedy. Well, it's a big club with big expectations, and when they're moving forward, the feeling around here is very positive. But uh, when it breaks down, the, uh, the groans all around here are agonizing. There's Jobson. Taylor helps it on to Kennedy. Head. Referee spotted it, gives a free kick against Robert Taylor. You see, up he goes. Uh, you're always going to have tussles like that. Yeah. Referee decided free kick. But what a three points this could be for City if they were to win this. Charlton so dangerous when they pass the ball in attack. If City can just pull it off, really sets them up. Here's Newton. He's got it in there towards Robinson, and Jobson was in the way, but the flag was up anyway. He's a pest, this guy, isn't he? One minute he's on the left wing, then he's sneaking in there. And really, Edgehill's got to be careful. Look, getting in behind him. It's clearly offside as the ball's dinked in. Teato's throw. Vikins. Brown beating Taylor to it. It's Whitley who's knocked it forward. And Whitley's found. Gota. It's back to Jeff Whitley. Oh! Well, should he have tried himself? Well, you can't look at Gota. For me, I'm sorry, Jeff. Jeff, for me, bottoms it a wee bit here. It's a lovely play. Now take a touch and finish. Oh, that's a great chance. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being a little bit harsh here, Rob, but I think he's got to blast that. The pass has to be absolutely perfect. Doesn't get many goals, and that's why. Three this season so far, Jeff Whitley. Gota appeared to have uh, played him in there. He gave the opportunity back to the striker. Now Taylor. 
Whitley, Pollock. Ah, oh, some misunderstanding, really. A misunderstanding. Pollock, I think, tries to do the right thing. Takes an extra touch, trying to suck Powell in so he can release Taylor. But Taylor's not really on his bike. Misunderstanding. to lift the side. Here's Brown. There's definitely activity down on the city bench, Rob. I'm in for a change. So then will be Danny Granville uh, coming on. Maybe the uh, knocks that Danny Tiato has uh, had during this game. There have been a couple. Been too much for him to withstand. And the header across oh. towards Sean Newton, and the flag has stayed down! Oh, what a chance. What a chance from Sean Newton. Great header from Svensson. Oh, dear. So much time Newton had. But this is Tiato. And what a surge this is from Danny Tiato. Taylor can't bring it under control. Well... What did we say a few moments ago? Up one end and suddenly back down the other, and Taylor should have scored. Like Newton, great run from the Australian, brilliant. It falls to Bob Taylor, his touch lets him down. Now, were they offside? But up the other end, great header from Svensson, just make contact. He slashes at it, and that's easy for Weaver. What a chance, glorious chance, come about while well, just inside the 18 yard box. No finish for Newton. Well, he could have claimed that one without any arguments, but uh, he couldn't finish it off, Sean Newton. And Kylie has come a very long way to meet uh, Robert Taylor on the charge. Uh, big Bob just got on his heels, you know. Got on his heels, his touch, not good enough. Here's Pollock. Some struggle this. Uh, it was one of three. It was one of three on, that was going to happen, that's for sure. Robinson and Paula. I'm amazed there's no punches been thrown. <laughs> end to end. Is there a winner coming? Edge Hill. It's Taylor's touch. Edge Hill's there again. Tyler, not the best of clearances, falls here for Mark Kennedy. Taylor, oh, just a little touch from Taylor. Gore couldn't get there, and Bishop was there at the far post. Again, Kennedy on the left peg, lovely little dink, any touch at all from Gore. And Chapman in trouble. An hour gone, and the pendulum seems to be swinging back in City's favour. I definitely thought. Grando was coming on for Tiato, but what a run Tiato just made. Nothing wrong with him. Quicker recovery than General Kudisha, I think, from Danny Tiato. Edge to Pollock. Here's Svensson. Robinson. So tense, so tight. A win for Champ would surely give them the championship. A win for City would make them firm favourites to go up with them. The waspish John Robinson now in the spotlight of player camp for Sky Digital viewers on Sky Sports Extra. Another good all-round display from him. He really has been a man in form in Charlton's excellent recent run, a run that included 12 consecutive victories before the upset against Swindon. Sean Newton, who could have put them in front here, is offside this time. You're getting deep runs from Charlton, you know, and a grand goal looks as if that's it. Get me on, Joe. Well, is it going to be Tiato who comes off, or is it going to be a change of uh, tactics here by Joe Royal? Now they try and make the switch. 
And it is going to be a change of direction because Granville is actually going to replace Ian Bishop. Second half, we haven't seen a lot of Bishop, have we? First half behind a lot of City's moves, not the second half. He's getting a good send off. I don't think he likes He's either disappointed with his injury or yeah, he's not happy, is he? Saying, come on, get off. And his contribution has been admired by the fans, and Danny Grinville comes on to uh, take his place in a tactical switch by the Manchester City manager. Just wonder if they're worried a bit. You know, all of a sudden, Sean Newton's getting involved in the game over on that side, Rob. Maybe Granville can track him. Kennedy is going to switch, I think, to the right hand side. Granville down the left hand side. Back from Taylor. Pollock. Jobson up against Svensson. That's Vikins. Tiato bumped into by Barnes. Uh, just over an hour gone. City have to keep this pressure on. Because Charlton are still very dangerous when they get on the break. Here's Kinsella. Well, let's be fair, a point of certainly do the London side. I think everyone agrees, Rob, in the first division, Charlton are the best side. Well, the lead they've uh, built up, Alan Kirbish, this team has been a, a commanding one. I wonder why he's like at half time and it's going wrong because he looks so calm and cool, Alan Kirbishley. And as a player, he was a bit like that as well, Rob. He was never really in your face. Good player. I reckon Pringle's coming on me. I think they're going to change it a little bit of pace just to start winning the two centre backs for City. I'm sure it's going to happen. Well, he's uh, involved in discussions with Alan Kirby, Mervyn at the moment. Oh, and the slip by Beacons and Newton's through, and Weaver saves it. And wow. gets his uh, teammate out of trouble there. I'll tell you what, Rob Robinson is absolutely furious. He is furious, Robinson. You see, Beacons always struggling. I thought he was going to go down. Does he look up? No, he doesn't. He goes for the goal. Robinson was at the far post. Look for a little pass. Watch Robinson react to this. He knows Newton's got a chance. He's go on then, give me it, give me it, just square it. What a waste. Robinson punches the air. Granville. Tiato. And he's unleashed Granville down that left-hand side now. Okay. Again, it's end to end. Is it up one end, down, back down the other? Well, Martin Pringle is going to come on now and take the uh, place of Matthias Svensson. That was a set to you, And this guy will cause problems because he will chase everything and he's, you know, he's very, very pacey. Search for his first Charlton goal goes on for Svensson. And Pringle, who scored four times this season, despite the fact that uh, 18 of his previous 28 league appearances have come from the bench. Comes on to try and uh, shake things up now in the final 25 minutes. Jobson as Kinsella. Kinsella charges down Tiato's ball and gives Pringle his first touch. Newton has gone inside. Now Sean Newton. It's Mark Kinsella. It's Graham Stewart. Robinson's cross, Andy Hunt. So that was a good ball in there, Hunt got the AG. He missed time the Hunt. That was a good ball, maybe a little flick on might have been better. Tried to power it for goal. But Robinson comes on his right foot, Edgehill's got to sort that out. Good ball! Hunt missed time's ahead of him. 
16 of his 21 goals this season have come away from the Valley, Andy Hunt. And uh, Charlton, despite having the uh, edge in terms of attempts, level with those on target. Chris Powell with a free kick. Tyler's headed back across. Cleared by Edge Hill, Barnes, Stewart. Powell, the last man back. Taylor really got hold of that one. He clears out towards Granville, although look at Pringle's energy going across to him. Well, Chase Everton. Never watching the pre-season tournament up in the northeast for Benfica on. Chases everything. Played under Graham Sulis there. I think it was at the riverside. To pulling back Carl Tyler. There's a little lull in the game now, and this is danger for me, uh, for Manchester City. I think if Charlton, you know, at the moment they're looking composed, Charlton passing the ball, I think Joe wants a bit more tempo, a bit more fight about his side. Newton. Theater. Here's Gota. Follow it to Kennedy. This is Edge Hill. It's big Robert Taylor, who's got a good first touch on the ball. And yet that chance, what, five, six minutes ago, when it came to him, he's touched let him down. Quickly. Bradville gets there in front of Pringle. Didn't quite break for Taylor. Barnes gets it away. He's a big lad, you know, and sometimes he's a bit of stick. He can't react quick enough. You know, he's got big legs, but when he gets in his stride, he's all right. It's the first few yards sometimes looks a bit ponderous. Teatro's got it forward and Gota's on to this! Can't do the same trick twice. And they had Kennedy at the far post as well, but only one thing in his mind here. Sean Gota runs along the line beautifully. Again, hits it slightly early, this time too early. Kennedy was at the far post, he was screaming, and that's a glorious chance missed. The cracking one that he took in the first half to give Manchester City the lead. Size things up from the corner, Jobson's in there. That's what Tyler's so important for Charlton. Tyler, Brown, Pringle's not bad there, and Hunt attacking the ball. It's Danny Granville who's got up this time, and it's cleared by Tyler. Edge Hill, too short for Diato, and it's Stewart who's onto it like a greyhound, with Robinson up ahead, and the flag has stayed down. Robinson is out wide, but he's got Pringle and Newton tearing through the middle. It's Pringle the substitutes! Well, what a chance this is. What a chance. I'm very disappointed in Jeff Whitley here. What is he doing stopping there? Whitley's got 
tons of pace, he doesn't need to try and step up. This could have cost City dearly. Pringle launches himself on the left foot, and that's a poor miss. He just times it wrong, launches it, and doesn't get any contact, hardly any. But what was Whitley doing? What a startling impact on the game the substitute Martin Pringle could have had then. Teato. Taylor forced off by Stewart. But no free kick given. It's Danny Granville. Tame cross cleared by Kinsella. Vikins to Jobson. This is Edge Hill. Kennedy. He in support. Robinson's doing well, you know, one minute ago he's in the right wing, Robinson. Now he's back there helping Paolo against Kennedy. That's great team play. Here's Edge Hill, across towards Taylor, good clearance by Brown. And he's immediately set Newton away. City step up again on Martin Pringle. Stewart. Andy Hunt. Here's Kinsella. Robinson, back from Pringle to Powell. Hunt and Newton are both forward being shadowed. Deakins keeping a close eye on Hunt. Granville not letting Newton out of his sights. This is Powell. And Whitley in the end takes it away from him. Jeff Whitley again. Now Taylor. Teato. Granville, approaching the final quarter of an hour and still evenly balanced, still no real indications of which way this game is going to tip. Yeah, it's got to go forward. Uh, Gota made the run, Granville didn't fancy, and as soon as he stopped, they were in trouble. Look at the action play, very, very even in the second half. Taylor climbing to try and beat Brown, it's Kinsella who's knocked it away in measured fashion to Barnes. I just think Charlton Rob are more incisive when they get the final third. The City promise, 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 and then it seems to break down. Charlton, that chance Pringle had was a great chance. Here's Edge Hill, City being urged on again. It's tied up. No chance of being taken. Well, I've had a back pass, no. Let's get it out, let's get it regroup. Back behind the ball. This is Gota, Richard Edge Hill, Robert Taylor, holding off ground for a bit. Nah, see, I don't like that. Taylor, you know, it's, he's just trying to bide his time, doesn't want to come into space too early, Taylor. Edge Hill plays a delightful ball in. That's him holding his ground, there's nothing wrong with that, and the touch is good again. Now, Joe's done that a few times, he doesn't agree either. So it was good centre forward playing. Discussion across the camps with uh, Joe Wall conversing with Mervyn Day. Pingles a nuisance, I, I told you, Rob, he is an absolute nuisance. He will chase Harry, and Vikings was a little bit fortunate there. Pringle is the subject of player cam now for Sky Digital viewers on channel 404. Manchester City here have a free kick. And Pollock Farber taking a quick one. And Kennedy's left foot there, you just leave it to him. Who's the target? Taylor at the far post, Goat alongside him. Well, will Kennedy try and uh, unleash one even from this sort of range? There's a measured one in towards Jamie Pollock and a vital header away from Tyler. What a good header as well, because Pollock was steaming in on that. Again, it's just a little clip with that left foot. He sees Brown, I think, just gets his head to it. Kennedy with the corner. Oh. 
Vikings got the touch. That came off Pearl. The ref's given a goal kick. I thought that came off Pearl. Do like a little ball near post only. Puts it in with pace. You see it hits Chrissy Pearl at the side net, but Charlton get the benefit of the doubt. Here's Granville. Now Jamie Pollock. Left in the end by Brown. Barnes to Newton. A good hiding from Manchester City. Now they need three if it's just still losing at Portman Road. Joe Royals, former club Everton, in action this afternoon against Newcastle, live on Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports Extra, coverage at 3 o'clock. And nationwide league action from the first division on Tuesday from Oakwell, Barnsley against Fulham, Sky Sports 2 and Sky Sports Extra from 7. With uh, Ipswich losing at the moment to Norwich, it could be a good day for Manchester City this. Tyler's arms around Gorton again. And you might be Teato or Kennedy, both good with the left foot. It's Charlton under pressure, last 13 minutes. As things stand, the point would be good enough to take uh, City into second place by virtue of uh, goal difference. But could they claim all three? Kick going in, and Jobson was waiting for it, but uh, Tyler making sure that he'll have to wait now for the corner. Going in, it's Brown who gets there though. Okay, Brown, Brown and Tyler have done really well back there. Yeah, when it's been there to be one in there, they'll put their head there, brave. Charlton had to cope with their share of injuries there this season and uh, suspension as well with Rufus out today. But uh, Brown and Tyler pretty much a, a makeshift pairing with uh, Eddie Yards, of course, still. Sidelined by injury. Jobson. Pringle. This is Robinson. Again, he comes inside and he's right foot. Edgehill's got to get closer to Robinson. Pringle. Kinsella. This is Hunt. Robinson. Now Powell. Kennedy blocks him first time. Can't block him the second though. Weaver having been held up by John Robinson eventually releases it, but uh, Brown is there. This is Vikins. And Barnes now has put Pringle through, and he's onside with only the goalkeeper to beat, and he can't do it. So well, if only this guy could finish. Because he's pace, he's willing, he's brave, but he's finished his mob dog. Well, they've had some massive chances to win this match, Charlton. Newton and yeah. Pringle with a couple. Sometimes, you know, I don't think he realises how quick he is, Pringle. He's got so much time, Rob. And this time it's Andy Hunt through. Can he do any better? He's brought down by Jobson. And the referee was keen to see, I think, if an advantage occurred. And nothing happens as a result of all that, and City could break. It's Gota. It's Pollock. Whitley takes over, looks for Jamie Pollock, Gota and Taylor are both still in the area. Brilliant from Brown again, brilliant. Pringle. Robinson doesn't escape with it the first time, but nothing to his right. Has to go back instead to Newton. And the two tired players out there now, the game, first half, tremendous tempo beginning to take its toll. 
Kinsella. Try to play it through the middle for Pringle, but Jobson has that area covered. Good interception by Tiato, it's Granville. And a clearing header, a convincing one from Tyler, and he finds his man, Andy Hunt. Kinsella made a great run from there, he couldn't just dink it in the space. Now Robert Taylor, Tiato bursting through the inside left channel, but he's gone for goal himself! That is so close. Andy knows it, Robert Taylor. So close, comes inside on his good right foot. Just keeps it low, strikes it well. And past Kylie Smoke. Far post, but what a chance at the other end. A few moments ago, look, 10 yards clear. What is that? Try to lift it over, over the goalkeeper, Weaver. That's a poor finish. And then Hunt through. You see Jobson is down. The referee decides to play advantage here. Now that's dangerous for Jobson and City get it clear. Pringle's chance, glorious chance. John Robinson. He's given edge, he'll the slip. Oh, claims a handball in on Whitley. Claims a handball on Jeff Whitley. Oh dear. Newton, blocked by Vikings. Tyler, Barnes. Here's Stewart. Powell, Pringle. And she'll get it away to Jamie Pollock. Oh, what a finish this match. Robinson was brewing a moment ago there against Hedgehill. Brewing Adam on toast. Kinsella could be shut down by Pollock. Here's Whitley. Now Mark Kennedy. Pollock. Kennedy again. Richard Edgehill. Cross towards Robert Taylor, pa uh, Brown is up there again and was fouled anyway. Yeah, Brown's done well. This was great play at the other end from Robinson, but does this bounce up into Jeff Whistle? Oh dear, I think that hits his left arm, I'm sure of it. But look at Edgehill, he's really struggling. Cut back, it comes to Whitley very quick, but look at that, that definitely, that's handball for me. I tell you where they were lucky City because Whitley had his back to the Charlton fans the Charlton fans couldn't see that properly or else there'd been an almighty scream what's it up shout that ball <laughs> go to Taylor and he stabbed it through but beyond Tiato's reach and Powell did what he had to do but uh, has suffered the consequences yeah, they're, both, they're both clattered into each other here Powell's brave Powell is brave because Tiato's quick and he goes full-blooded for this, Powell gets there first, and Seattle follows through, and that looks quite high. Does it catch him in the face? Watch Seattle's arm. Bang, right in the side of Powell's face. Pure commitment, Powell's in trouble. Seattle, when he forges into the box, and sees trying to protect himself, and Powell goes down in a heap, holding the left side of his face. He's got to revive himself pretty quickly because in this frantic finish, Charlton now have to defend against the Manchester City corner. Can Joe Royal's team make the first division leaders wilt? Kennedy's kick. Away from Jobson. This is Danny Granville. He's won the throw. Edgehill. Senna coming across to him. Corner given. Corner given and Charlton have to defend again. They've been fantastically brave in there. Especially two big centre-halves. Is this pressure going to tell? Look how they've rattled up the corner count in this match, Manchester City. But can it yield anything? on by Vikings, it's Tiato who's closing in, Danny Tiato blocked by Kinsella in the end for another corner. Pressure, 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 City fans behind the goal, right, suck it in, 
Seattle on the left foot, double block, another corner. Well, they're huffing and they're puffing, but can they blow the Charlton rear guard down? There's a little bargy bargy in there as well. The referee's trying to sort out. And Pringles involved. Pollock is there as well. It looks like a confrontation between here and Carl Tyler. That's the one who he's trying to uh, direct his abuse at. Pollock's the angry one. He's saying there's a bit of he heads here. Have a look. Middle of the picture there, right on the centre. Wow, it's a bit of both, isn't it? Six of one and half a dozen other, right on the penalty spot. Couple of rams locking horns. Nothing in it. Stiff word of warning, though, from uh, John Kirkby. The flow just disrupted again before the latest corner is taken. Manchester City's ninth corner of the game. Kennedy swings it out, chops and tries to get there. It's Jeff Whitley, and it was always going wide of the mark. I just feel Jeff Whitley, you know, he works so hard, he's quick, he gets in the tackle. Sometimes when it comes to a goal threat, I think he freezes sometimes, Rob, to be honest. We go back early when he had a good chance, when he tried to give it back to Goten, and Joe, uh, Joe Ramos, I thought, oh, hit the ball. He'll know the score from Portman Road as well, Joe Ramos. He knows how important, if they can just sneak another goal. One point's not bad with a game in hand, but if they can get all three, really sets them up. Is it the Ipswich wobble again? Kennedy. Cleared by Pam. Pringle. Oh, Whitney tried to step over and Robinson was in there. Here's Edge Hill. Gota. from Powell and he's got his cross in and it's cleared again by Brown who's been outstanding at the back what a ball from Kennedy as well surely someone's got to be on the end of that but Brown's been magnificent Kennedy and they've doubled up on him with Robinson and Powell both there and he's got it back here to Jamie Pollock and Goethe has gone in for it and Kylie claws it away well Kylie looked at Tyler and as we're looking at each other, suddenly Gorter gets in first. Pollock drives, bounces in the air, look, hesitation. Gorter gets a toe on it. Kylie gets back, flaps it away for another corner. Another City corner. The corner count into double figures. Anxiety here for Dean Kylie as Kennedy finally tries to break through the resistance. Taylor came thumping through. Makes a near post run, Taylor. Look at the bodies at the near post going for it. Gorter's in there. The referee makes the right decision. Goal kick. Just one minute of injury time to be added on. So Manchester City have shown commendable spirit to go for a winner but time very much against them Steve Brown a key figure in keeping them out is the nationwide man of the match yeah I think there's a few out there you could give it to but he him and Tyler have been excellent I think Robinson's had a good game as well Rob Robinson's worked his socks off Seattle's done well as well for City. Granville's ball towards Gota, cleared again by Steve Brown. Kinsella. That's why Granville was put on that side, Granville, because he flopped the pace of Newton, and Newton had a glorious chance as well for Charlton. Charlton have had the best chances. More possession from City, Charlton have the best clear-cut chances. Well, it could be a watershed afternoon for Joe Royals, Manchester City. They're still without a win in six now, but this has been a very well-earned draw against Charlton, as both teams have shown why they are among the best in the first division. 
Sean Goder it was who put Manchester City ahead in the first half and before the break Charlton drew level when John Robinson the shot was deflected in by Sean Newton Robinson has been claiming it but without Newton's diversion Weaver would not have been beaten Martin Pringle had a golden opportunity in the second half to seal the points for Charlton but that was denied by Nicky Weaver but with the news coming in that Norwich have beaten Ipswich Manchester City are up to second in the table Charlton's lead at the top is undented, even extended. And Alan Kirbishley's team not quite coasting towards the Premiership, but doing very well indeed. And Manchester City are moving closer as well to joining them perhaps in the Premiership next season. That was nice, Rob, wasn't it? They just flashed up the scoreboard there that it's just got beat and got it. And a huge roar went up. Well, it's been an excellent day all round. Alan Kirbishley, I'm sure, will be delighted with the point. Dean Kiley played his part after the early scare of handling outside the box and getting only a yellow card for that. Charlton almost there, closing in on the Premiership. Draw in the end, just about the fair result, despite the weight of pressure that Manchester City had and their great surge towards the end of the game where they were corner after corner, but they couldn't make it count. And it's finished here at Main Road. Manchester City 1, Charlton 1. Tremendous stuff. Thank you very much to Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. There's more live football coming your way very shortly here on Sky Sports. Super Sunday from Goodison Park. Everton and Newcastle. That begins at 3 o'clock on Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports Extra. Right, let's confirm the top of the first division. Remember... Norwich have beaten Ipswich by two goals to nil. Roberts with both, although a Thetis own goal may be the uh, option as far as the first Norwich goal today is concerned. But Manchester City move above Ipswich, whatever. 65 from 36. They're ahead of the Suffolk side on goal difference. They've got a game in hand as well. And Charlton now surely as good as back in the Premiership. Well, so many talking points. Ray and Nigel have been here throughout the day. What a game, what a second half, so many chances for Pringle, an oh, endless list of opportunities really. What, was it the right result in the end, do you think? I think just about, Marcus, yeah, but I, I've got to say Charlton did have the better chances, you know, clear-cut chances, and if, if they'd have made the right decisions and been slightly more clinical, they should have won that by a couple of goals, I felt. And Charlton at the back, defensively outstanding, the two central defenders yes. in particular, Nigel. Especially Carl Tyler, who's just come in, really, because Rufus is out. And uh, they didn't really miss Richard Rufus today, so that's a credit to Carl Tyler and Brown, who were tremendous at the back. But it, um, I think Charlton on the break looked very good, although Man City had most of the possession on the break. And if the right, as Ray said, if they're taking the right option, Sean Newton, Pringle stuck those chances away. I mean, it could have been a different story, but uh, it's all to play for. Very, very tight at the top now, isn't it? Certainly is. Let's have another look at the uh, two first half goals, both of them with a, a shade of good fortune. Uh, Sean Goder with the first. It was a lovely pass from Bishop and Ray. You were a bit surprised when he was taken off. I was, um, but I'm not the manager of Manchester City. But I, I always think when you've got a player like Bishop in, in, in your centre of midfield, he's going to pick out something like that. And it takes a pass like that to open up a game as tight as, as it was in the first half. Well, the, uh, the equaliser, this debate is going to run and run as to whether Robinson or Newton gets given it. But the important thing from a Charlton point of view is that it went in. Yeah, it did go in and it was Sean Newton. And I think Robertson's had the shot, but it's hitting Newton and going in. But Newton had two great chances in the second half, which he didn't stick away. And so did this lad Pringle. Lovely yeah. ball across. And he just should have taken one more stride there. He's stretching for it and doesn't get much contact on it. He's like roadrunner the way he suddenly arrives <laughs> from nowhere, isn't he? He deserves the score, Mark, because he, he's just defended a corner kick there. And he must have travelled 85 yards. Yeah. And poor bloke, he just couldn't put it in the back of the net. As far as the general picture is now concerned, Ipswich having an absolute nightmare. So Manchester City, with a home draw, have stolen an advantage. Joe Royal will, I suppose, be reasonably pleased about that. Oh, he'd be that. reasonably pleased about the way the results have gone. But if they've got three points today, they'd give them a little bit of breathing space. But they have still got a game in hand. And their next five games, four of them against teams in the bottom half. So, you know, the, the next five games, obviously, very, very important. But it's so close there. I mean, Birmingham are on a great run, as we all know. They could sneak in. And cigar time now for Charlton. <laughs> Not quite cigar time, Marcus, but they'll be enjoying it. OK, Ray Nigel, thank you very much uh, indeed. Uh, don't forget, we are back on Tuesday. Another game from the First Division, important game near the top. It's Barnsley and Fulham. But today, it's finished one apiece, and it was great stuff. From us all for now, it's goodbye. <laughs>